Before we start, I just want to say this. I always do my own research on these Skyrim lore videos and avoid any videos talking about the topics I cover to make sure I give you the most unique perspective I can. Now, if you've heard of the Godhead theory or anything I'm covering in this video, I would still like to ask that you give me a shot on this one. During my research on this topic, I've come up with a theory that I don't think anyone else has suggested or even thought of yet. And to all the sons and daughters of Skyrim, new and old, I have just one question to ask you. Do you want to see this world in a way you never have before? Godhead theory is one that has probably been discussed since way before Skyrim itself was even a game. Some people think Godhead is a word used to describe a group of gods going under one name, such as the Alm Sivi, which is a triune godhead of Almalexia, Sothasil, and Vivek. Thanks to the Dragonborn DLC, there's actually a mention of these gods coming from Ravenrock's local priest, where he describes them as no longer worshipped, but instead recognized as saints. But in my opinion, that's not important. That is not the true meaning of Godhead. The second belief of what a Godhead is, is actually an entity that is plagued by madness and split personalities. And most people believe that this Godhead created the Oribus, which is basically just the Skyrim word for the universe. And this deity created the universe and everything in it that we've come to love by simply dreaming it into existence. Now you might be thinking, Talos, Akatosh, Debella, aren't these the true gods and goddesses of Skyrim? At this point, I'm not even that sure. People believe in them, and I feel like that probably gives them some form of reality. But the deeper you go into the Godhead rabbit hole, the more you realize that everything encompassing the Elder Scrolls universe goes way deeper than the surface. And this might be hard for viewers that are new to lore to understand, so I'm gonna try my best to make it as easy as possible for you. Now you might be thinking, this is obviously all just fan speculation and theory. Like we know the gods and goddesses of Skyrim, and there's no mention of the Godhead anywhere right? That is, until you start digging into the forbidden knowledge of the black books. Now sure, reading is probably the last thing you're doing in Skyrim, and that's probably why you overlooked it. But if you fight your way through the Dragonborn DLC long enough to get your hands on the Waking Dreams black book, which I kind of just downloaded a cheat room to get my hands on it because I'm not playing through the whole Dragonborn DLC just for this part, you can open it to find it only has one page which says the following. The eyes once bleached by falling stars of utmost revelation will forever see the faint insight drawn by the overwhelming question. As only the true inquiry shapes the edge of thought, the rest is vulgar fiction attempts to impose order on the consensus mantlings of an uncaring godhead first. The word godhead is right there. In an official Skyrim DLC, this could very well be the true essence of the Elder Scrolls, the real forbidden knowledge. And it's almost as if this passage only makes sense to those who are searching for this knowledge. The faint insight drawn by the overwhelming question, possibly meaning the question of the Godhead's existence. The rest is vulgar fiction, attempts to impose order on the consensus mantlings of an uncaring Godhead first. To me, it sounds like that part is just confirming the Godhead's existence and at the same time denying the Aedra and Daedra of their power. I don't know. Maybe I went off on a tangent for that one. In my opinion, this has confirmed that the Godhead is real. And I'm here to understand this theory better with you so that next time we boot up one of our saves, we see this world in a way we never have before. So from here on, it might actually get a little confusing, and I'm going to do the best I can to give you detailed explanations on everything. So the summary of chapter one, the Godhead is an entity plagued by madness and split personalities that brought the Oribus to life by simply dreaming it into existence. And this entity has widely come to be known as the First Dreamer. It is also said that within the nature of this dreamer lies the secret of the Sigic Endeavor. And the Sigic Endeavor is a cosmic process by which mortals are charged with transcending and surpassing the gods and entering a state better known as Chim. Chim is best described as a state of being which allows escape from all known laws and limitations of the universe. To reach Chim is to reach the epiphany of the nature of the universe and one's place in it. And finally, there is only one state of existence higher than Chim. This state is known as Amaranth, not that Amaranth. Now put your ding ding away. Amaranth is the state beyond Chim that involves mantling a godhead and essentially becoming the new dreamer. And finally, the last word I'm going to have to teach you is mantling. It's mentioned in the book Waking Dreams, 
and I have flashed it on your screen every time I've said it up until this point. Mantling is essentially when a mortal claims the sphere of a deity or god and the two become synonymous with each other. So with all this in mind, it honestly sounds like any guy from Tamriel could somehow work their way up the ladder and become not only a god, but the god that dreams the world into existence. How they would do it, it doesn't seem like there's really an answer yet, but it seems possible. So the question is, could it have already happened? My master has abandoned me, abandoned his people, and nothing I say can change his mind. Ever since the very first time I ever played the Wabajack quest almost a decade ago, it's always been my favorite. I mean, how could you forget the quest where you get teleported to some alternate dimension and play with a staff that can turn someone into a sweet roll, which you can then eat? It's always on my mind at the start of every new playthrough alongside Blood on the Ice. By the way, Hiram is the coolest house besides Bree's home. I will actively fight you in the comments. And now with the peak of my pursuit of forbidden knowledge, the mind of madness comes to mind and bridges the gap between little kid me who's just enjoying the game and adult me who's far too obsessed with the video game from 2011. So allow me to explain how I think this quest not only ties into the Godhead theory, but contains the answer to the identity of the first dreamer. Now I'm gonna do a quick description of the Mind of Madness quest so it's fresh in all of our minds first. If you decide to approach Drevenin around the cemetery in solitude. He'll basically tell you his boss is on vacation and we need to break into a back room of the royal castle in one of the most fortified cities in Skyrim to find him. Must be super difficult. Hey, let me into this room. Not in your life. This guy said I could. Don't make sure though. If you really want to. All right, here's a literal key to the castle. So you'll go through a bunch of rooms until you finally make your way to this hallway. And once you try to set foot in it, your world is gonna change. Ah, and this is where you meet this guy, Sheogorath, Danger Prince, Prince of Madness. And where have we just been teleported to? I'll just let him say it. Welcome to the deceptively verdant mind of the Emperor Pelagius the Third. That's right. You're in the head of a dead, homicidally insane monarch. <laughs> so basically, we tell him he needs to come back from vacation for driving instructor. To which he responds, "Sure." We can leave, but you gotta complete these three trials first. One where a physical representation of Pelagius's anger is beating on his confidence and we gotta make his confidence bigger. One where we gotta dispel his bad dreams with the Wabajack and turn them into nice dreams while he sleeps. It's the hammer! And one where we like fight some dwarven guys who represent his fear of his mother or something. I, I don't, I don't really get this one. I never have. Then he says he's ready to leave, gives you the Wabajack as a parting gift and sends you on back to the hallway we just came from as if it was a bad skooma trip and we never even left. And just like that, that encounter ends. You have a new staff that makes Skyrim infinitely more fun and finished one of the most entertaining quests in the game besides a night to remember. And now we're on one of the last chapters of this video. And let me tell you, put your helmet on because this is about to blow your mind. So with all we know about the Godhead theory and the Mind of Madness, it's time for me to explain why I think the two are undeniably connected. At the very description of the Godhead, it is described as a deity stricken with madness and split personalities. Sheogorath is the Daedric Prince of Madness, and Pelagius III was a once good-natured emperor who had lost his mind. With a Google search, I found this post that says the Wolf Queen Potema gave Pelagius an enchanted necklace during the Siege of Solitude that they believe slowly destroyed his mind over time and that could possibly be the answer to his mental state but what if it's not what if instead pelagius the third somehow managed to mantle to sheogorath again mantling meaning he and sheogorath had become one in the same with each other and in return pelagius received his madness as his counterpart to sheogorath which could explain the split personalities what if then after his death which was allegedly due to a fever while he was in prison at the temple of kinnereth he achieved chim 
mantled to the godhead, achieved Amaranth, and then became the new dreamer. It would then make sense that though Sheogorath makes it seem like we're just in the mind of Pelagius during this quest, we have likely been in Pelagius's dream all along. I mean, the world around you during this quest doesn't look much different than like the rift during a foggy morning. And at the end of the Mind of Madness, Sheogorath gives us the Wabajack to take from Pelagius's mind and bring it into the real world for us to use. So what makes more sense? We can bring the staff out of a dream into the real world because magic? Or because we've always been in Pelagius's mind? In his dream? With everything I've told you during this time we've had together, do you think that the whole time someone as simple as a Daedric Quest side character could possibly be the reason all of this exists? I don't see why not. Sorry, it's getting hot as fuck in this outfit, dude. So here we are. If any of you have made it this far in the video, give me a cheese in the comments so I know who really gave me a fair shot. I don't know how far this video is gonna go, and I may not have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, but I have a lot of love for Skyrim and the Elder Scrolls, and I appreciate you listening to my crazed ramblings. Because lately, these lore deep dives have somehow catapulted my obsession with Skyrim to radioactive levels, and I just wanted to share it with you. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments comments if there's any holes in my theory if there's anything you think i missed any thoughts you would like to add i just want to make waves in the elder scrolls community and i think my little theory might be the first thing i've ever done that might be completely fresh if you enjoyed please consider liking and subscribing because i put hours of work into this project and you can always change your mind later and if you have another friend who might be obsessed with skyrim consider sending them this video they just might want to see it and if you were that friend so what you think? I plan to bring you more tales to tell soon, so I hope I see you again. And I'm gonna let Shale Gorath do the outro for this one. As for you, a little mortal minion, feel free to keep the Wabajack as a symbol of my... I'll just take the damn thing. You take care of yourself now. And if you ever find yourself up in New Shale, do look me up. We can share a strawberry tart. Ha <laughs> ha! Ta-ta!